Hello? Um, this is a presentation about Builder, which is an Apache project. Um, just to get you in the mood, these are not my slides. Uh, I just borrowed them from the actual project lead. Um, so sometimes you'll see the name Alex pop up in there. It's the, the actual guy you, got, you could ask questions to if you want. So Apache Builder is a build system, and our motto or tagline is build like you code. Uh, this is a practical introduction to it. Our motto used to be a build system that doesn't suck. And people started to feel it was a bit offensive, so we moved around, you know. <laughs> um, just to give you some context, it started in uh, when we were working at Intelio on Apache OD. Uh, back then, there was working on a Beeple process engine. Huge, huge project. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, more than 15 modules. We were trying to support nine different databases, which means that we had SQL files for all kind of databases. Uh, we have 100 and plus dependencies, uh, including, of course, all the access to uh, things. Uh, three different distributions based on either Tomcat. Uh, at the time, we were supporting Geronimo and JBoss, of course. And a lot of heavy tooling, uh, particularly when you're trying to test that everything is working fine from uh, if your XML is well formed to the point that you're trying to do process correlation. So we're using Maven 2 back then, uh, over 5,000 lines of XML, and of course 52 files. I mean, one per project, right? There's got to be a better way. So what we really wanted, in, you know, they took a, a blank sheet of paper and they, they worked on it. They, they tried to get all the features they wanted, no XML. Something flexible, something that you can customize, you can extend. Um, it was 2007, so dry was all the, all the furry. Uh, you had to have uh, code that would not repeat itself or you were out, you were not in fashion. Of course, it's still very much there, right? Uh, in other words, we wanted a real scripting language. So, um, Using the, the new practices, using the new practices of the moment, uh, the result was to go from all those lines of XML and try to use Ruby instead. So 50, 52 files, one file, over 5,000 lines of XML, less than 500 lines of Ruby. So as a bonus, it was twice as fast. So how did we do it? Well, we used Rake. We used Rake as our uh, framework to handle files, file dependencies. And Rake is pretty good as uh, the notion of task. So you could create a lifecycle under a project and say, my project is first going to look for dependencies and it's going to compile and it's going to package and test and upload. So if you do an upload, you know you have to go through all those uh, test uh, uh, tasks before, sorry. Of course, we're based on Ruby which is pretty awesome by itself. And we added a, a lot of added value uh, or own DSL uh, on top of uh, a rake. So why Ruby? Well, first off, scripting. I mean, we really wanted to be able to do any kind of regular expressions uh, in kind of lightweight syntax, uh, go back to the command line at any time. We wanted to be very expressive so that we could have our own DSL and not be afraid of having an interrogation mark inside a a method name, for example. Uh, we're trying to be very JVM friendly. So when we started, we, we first started with a, a Ruby Java bridge, which is a, a way in MRI to have a C integration with uh, Java. But uh, we also worked very hard to get a good JRuby feel. So today, when you launch Builder, you launch JRuby at the same time, and you launch only one JVM for the whole process. So every time you're compiling, you're not uh, forking a new uh, a new Java C. You're using always the same JVM. So you load once, you reuse it every time. So that's how we got all those good results. So this is some uh, builder code. This is a very specific DSL. And it looks like a, a rake file for those who are used to rake. So basically, we start with defining a top-level project in which we uh, define three different projects, A, B, and C. And uh, those three projects, as you can see, depend on each other. So C depends on A and B. And the final project is going to depend on the three of them. 
And if you do a builder package, for example, all the task dependencies resolution is made. So if you're going to do a package of the war of the final project, it's going to build all your projects for you and put them into your final war. No assembly required. Um, here is the output. So we cleaned it up a little uh, in our last release, but that's how it looks like. Um, and you get a, a good feel of what's happening. What's really interesting is that we try to get a feel of uh, artifacts and repositories so that we could use the ones that are defined in Maven. So for, for example, here is a Maven repository in the middle of your, your builder code. And uh, you, you can reuse it and you can see that the, the artifact is uh, down there is log4j. So how do we do that? We, we take uh, what used to be you know group ID, put some strings there, artifact ID, put some strings there, the version, the extension. We put that into a string and we make sense of it. So um, we started with just Java, but very quickly we thought that it would be great to support more than just Java. So we, we started with uh, Java. We now have Scala, Scala 2.8 was supported as of this uh, last summer. Uh, we have plenty of good things in there. Um, well, con continuous compilation works for both Scala and Java anyway. Um, we have a lot more stuff uh, and a lot of plugins. Uh, we have code coverage. We have all those added value plugins that you see on Maven that finally all they need is a, is a wrapper so that you can be executed from Builder. So for example, Findbugs was just two days of work to have uh, uh, Findbugs working with Builder. So only one thing to remember, you should build like you could. So this is the Drools project. Anybody familiar with Drools here? Vaguely. <laughs> OK. Here is a typical build file. In here, we tried to take Drools, and Drools is using Maven. And we're not happy with that, because we wanted to package Drools in an OSGI compliant way. So pretty much, you had to change three, three entries in each manifest every time. And it's pretty hard to maintain. So at some point, we said, hey, you know, let's create that small project that's just a set of uh, small uh, files from, from Builder, that's just a configuration thing. And we merge it into the master of tools, and then we do a release using our conventions. So here, for example, here is our BPM engine project. And we have, for example, the core of tools. So this is how we, co we compile it. And we're shielding you from having all your dependencies in there. We're going to move them to a different file. And when you test, you can exactly tell what you're going to test with. So your test dependencies, for example, are located in that file. As you can see, it's just a set of strings. It's very maintainable. And if you have more than one thing at a time, so you can put them in arrays. Well, you know, we'll sort it out for you. No worries. So, you know, you have your build file and you notice that bundle, that's actually some extension we made. So we decided that JAR was cool, but we want to have OSGI bundles directly. So we're extending Builder to support bundles. And we're, you know, doing a few projects like that. At the end of it, we're putting them together inside what we call a feature, which is just another OSGI compliant thing. And you see, it's, it's really lean. There's no... I did line there's nothing that's really panning out or so you get you get your assembly of all your plugins inside your feature and then you can even put them inside a site and up oh, you're done so the, the build takes about six minutes of course we pass on the test because we rely on rules to be compliant but here is a good idea of how a build file looks like if i have time for another one here is a terrible build file something that you should never do but I'm going to show you anyways. So this is a BPMN modeler build. It's a project at Eclipse that I happened to lead by mistake. Um, um, we had to, the, the build system of Eclipse is highly uh, customized. It's to the point that if you're not using CVS, you're probably not going to be able to make it work. Though it's getting better and better by the day. So um, I'm bad mouthing now. Um, but when I did that back in 2008, 2009, uh, it was a bit hard 
So let's go first to the to the project. The project is super simple. I mean, you have four four different jars, and see, I'm using also the the plugin here. It's a synonym of bundle. So I have four jars, one feature where I'm saying, hey, uh, you know, just a copyright and setting everybody in there, adding a license file. And here is how I do my site. Now let's go for the dirty things. When you have your site, you have to do some Eclipse specific stuff. And here I'm creating my own task for it. So I'm saying that I package my site, and then I have to sign it, I have to pack it, I have to digest it. So this is how you would treat your jars so that they're completely signed by Eclipse so that they can go into an official release, right? So I'm creating that, and then I'm saying it's depending on the package uh, site task. So whenever you you're trying to create the, the site, you're actually going to have this task to execute first as a prerequisite. And this is all Rake standard syntax. I know some people get a bit lost about this uh, if I don't instrument request because we have to pass an array to this method for some reason. So if we go back, you can see we're, we're doing a sign here. And oh, surprise, it's all Ruby code. It's horrible. I mean, we go back to the command line and the webmasters of Eclipse for some reason think that we should use a command line to do user bin sign. So you copy the jar to the right location, you put it there, and you tell the sign script, hey, please come back to me, you know? And then when the, the, the file is finally copied to the, the location it should be, then you can continue. The signing process can take two hours, and sometimes it's pretty bad. Um, then you have the packing itself, where you're going back to the command line as well, and you're packing it using a very specific tool from Eclipse. And finally, you digest it. Same horrible story. So just to, to get a feel, uh, I went from a standard uh, project at Eclipse, and I had to go back to command line to do things. I was able to do everything in one file. Thank you.